Hi, my name is Kirill Alexeyev, and today I will tell how we implemented a high load storage of users' actions with Scylla and HDDs. So, I am 24 years old, and I am a software engineering team lead in the largest email service provider in Russia. I graduated from Lomonosov Moscow State University last year with a master's degree in computer science. I am fond of music, I play in a rock band, and have recently started DJing. So let's talk numbers. We have 19 million unique real users every day and 47 million unique real users every month. We receive 1 million new letters per minute. So let me give a brief overview of the service I will be talking about. So let's say that uh, some user commits some action like checks for new messages or probably sends a new message and every such action we store. Um, for example, User may want from may want to check from time to time uh, whether something happened in the mailbox, and we provide our users with such a functionality. And you can see an example of such interface on the screenshot. So basically, actions history is a time series of actions stored by email, and every action has a user field, email in this case, a time field, AP address. Uh, which is the AP from which the action has been committed and project ID, which stands for the ID of the client who wrote the action and also the action ID, which stands for the ID of action, of particular action, like uh, check for new messages or probably upload a new photo into the cloud. So there is a HTTP API which can serve both write and read requests. There is a bunch of clients like mail service or cloud service or probably calendar service. Um, and these clients write actions by user into this API. Uh, and basically on every write or read request, API goes to the storage. So this service uh, handles 65,000 write requests uh, per second at, at peak load and around 50 reads per second at peak load. So you can see here that we have just a few reads and writes per well like 1,000 times. So uh, we wanted to change our storage because it had these problems. Uh, first, it had uh, poor scalability, which means that we had to add too much nodes to handle the increasing traffic. Also, it was uh, developed by us from scratch, which means that adding a new functionality took pretty long time and it really lacked a lot of must have features like secondary indexes or tunable replication or query language. So we decided we wanted to change it and we decided to go with Stila. So currently we have two data centers, four nodes in the first one, four still nodes in the first one and five still nodes in the second one, replication factor set to one inside HDC. We use consistency level of one for both writes and reads because we want to be available if one data center goes down and we only have one data center, two data centers. Um, and also we are okay to serve inconsistent reads for a short period of time. And this doesn't happen really often. We run still on better metal, better metal machines, uh, packed with two Intel Xeon 6230s, 192 gigabytes of RAM, two SATA SSDs of size one terabyte in a RAID 1 array for comet logs, and 10 large HDs of size 16 terabytes in a RAID 10 array for data. And all the nodes are connected with 10 gigabit network. So this is how column the column family looks like. And every partition is a list of actions sorted by time. And every partition is identified by user, year, week, and project. So we kind of split all users data into buckets by weeks. Um, partitions can be quite large though, but thanks to promoted in index, even large partitions can be iterated quite fast. And we use time window compaction strategy with size of one week, which gives us pretty good write amplification. So you can see that all data is stored by user, but let's say that our security team wants to check uh, whether there have been multiple authorizations to multiple users from a single IP address. 
And in this case, we need to provide an ability to read by a secondary key. So Stilek has an out of the box feature called secondary indexes, but this gives unpredictable performance because um, on every read, it may involve an ambiguous number of network requests to other nodes and also less of random IO, which is bad for HDDs. Another approach uh, uses materialized views, but those require a read before every update and with our write rate, it would just kill our HDDs. So we decided to go another way. We created a separate table by different partition key and we started duplicating writes to that table from our application. Uh, here is how the column family looks like for this separate table. And you can see that basically we substituted the user field in the primary key with the IP field. So this approach gives requires twice space, which is okay since we use HDDs and those are cheap, and twice write load, which is also okay because writes are mostly sequential in Scylla and that works okay with HDDs. And this approach gives us predictable performance on reads. So this cluster can handle handles 240,000 uh, writes per second, probably more we just never tested, with 95th percentile of timing equal to 1.5 milliseconds and 99.9th .9 percentile of timing equal to 22 milliseconds. Uh, with this write rate, our cluster grows uh, with 4 terabytes of compressed data every week. And it handles on average 10 to 100 reads per second with average timing equal to 120 milliseconds, 95th percentile of timing equal to 400 milliseconds, and 99.9th .9 percentile of timing equal to 650 milliseconds. And I should mention that uh, both write and read latencies are measured on client, not on Scylla. So HDs are slow and we ran into some problems with our HD stop. Uh, the first problem, the first thing I want to talk about is the configuration parameter entitled num IOQs, which stands for a number of threads that interact with disks. In most SSD setups, you will most probably find this parameter set to some value like number of still shards, but this won't work with HDDs. That is just too much for HDDs. In case of HD setup, you have to find your own sweet spot so that throughput is optimal and latencies are still okay. Uh, there is a great mathematical result entitled Little's Low, uh, and I do not aim for a precise determination, but in this case, it would roughly state something like the more concurrency you give, the more time it will take to handle one request. And HD can handle one request at a time, so given uh, the setup of 10 HDDs in array 10 array, you can have the maximum concurrency of five for writes. So you should set this parameter to something like four or five. Another problem we ran into was that no tool repair would not finish an acceptable time. We started it and it lasted for like a month and still did not finish. And meanwhile, cluster was highly overloaded. So we had to find another way to repair our cluster and we did. So let's say that at some particular moment of time, one node goes down and you know the exact moment of time when this happened. So normally not tool repair would have to run a full scan of all data in your cluster to find all possible inconsistencies. And this is kind of overkill in case of time series because in case of time series, you know exactly when this happened and you know exactly which SS tables are damaged. So you just need to go to the nodes that did receive all the writes. Uh, you need to gather all SS tables on those nodes that contain data for the given time range. Uh, then you need to transfer all those SS tables to the damage node and run node tool refresh on that node to upload the new SS tables into that node. So node tool refresh will finish quickly by kicking out um, compactions of new data. And meanwhile, the cluster will not be over overloaded on the contrary to not to repair. And most probably compactions will finish in a couple of hours. At least that is how it happened for us. Uh, there are still some problems to be solved. Uh, for example, the first problem, uh, latencies grow during compactions, cleanup, bootstrap, and when a node is down, but the growth is within a reasonable limit. 
Uh, also, bootstrapping is kind of slow, but it still works and it's faster than repair. So you can reasonably ask yourself, why should I go the hard way? Uh, why should I use the HD setup? And the answer is that you can save at least $150,000 of capital expenses per one petabyte if compared to SSD setup. So uh, we have achieved the following results. We have built a high load service for storing users' actions with Scylla and HDDs. The given service is able to handle 240,000 writes per second with 95th percentile of timing equal to 1.5 milliseconds with just a few Scylla nodes. And we have implemented an approach to serve reads by a secondary key with predictable performance. Next year, we are going to add a third DC. We are going to optimize Scylla and clients to get even better latencies. And we are going to integrate Scylla into more projects. I would like to give my special thanks to Dima and Pacha for helping me build and deploy this service, to Igor for approving the R&D process, to Vlad, Avi, and Rafael for helping me in the GitHub issues uh, in Slack and everywhere possible, and to the whole SteelDB team for an awesome product we're happy to use. Thank you for listening to my report.